Is this message to Pamela? Just to make sure, I'm asking you. Do you know how to use messaging? Also, how to read messages? It's quite a greeting to someone you just met. Yes, this message is indeed to me, Pamela. When asking someone's name, shouldn't you introduce yourself first? Who might you be? I'm Meander. Your husband's girlfriend. Excuse me? What does that mean? It means exactly what it sounds like. That's why I'm asking what you mean. When you say my husband, you mean Jeff, right? How do you know Jeff, and why are you claiming to be his girlfriend? Wait, are you serious about that? Oh dear, women like you lack understanding of language. So, I mean what I literally said. I'm your husband Jeff's girlfriend. I'm sending you messages, but you're not seeing them, are you? Well, I guess it's not just your understanding that's lacking. Your eyesight must be failing, too. Being an old lady and all. Your choice of words is really getting on my nerves. Anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand. You say you're Jeff's girlfriend, but that means you're his mistress, right? Hmm, I suppose that's one way to put it. By the way, Pamela, are you misunderstanding something? What do you mean by misunderstanding? I mean exactly what the word suggests. What exactly are you misunderstanding? You don't think you're Jeff's true love, do you? True love? You're no longer Jeff's true love. Not someone like you, an old lady. I am Jeff's true love. In other words, his real wife. Actually, you are more like Jeff's mistress. That's a strange way to put it. Jeff and I have gotten married. So I am officially Jeff's wife. Despite that, why do you have to nitpick like this just for the sake of being his mistress? Ugh, you're just a nagging old woman. Anyway, I'm Jeff's true love and his wife. Stop blabbering and just get a divorce from Jeff already. You have no place in his life anymore, so just back off. Are you getting angry now? I'm trying to resolve this calmly. Anyways, this is not something I can handle alone. When my husband comes back from work, I'll explain the situation to him. Until then, can you wait and not ask for details? What? Who are you talking about? Waiting for someone to come back. Who is your partner in this conversation? What are you talking about? My husband, Jeff, of course. Well, unfortunately for you, that's not going to happen. If it's Jeff you want to talk to, he's with me. What? What does that mean? It means that Jeff is with me right now. And we're in the same hotel room, sleeping in the same bed. What? What are you talking about? Ah, you're finally surprised. Oh, and I forgot to mention that this message I'm sending you... I secretly borrowed the message ID from his phone while he was sleeping. You went that far? I tried to convince him many times that I, a younger woman, am better than you, an old lady. But he just can't bring himself to divorce you, so I got fed up and borrowed the message ID. I'm talking to you directly like this to get you to divorce him quickly. Jeff, who was secretly meeting with you, is also Jeff, but... Would you really go this far to divorce me and Jeff? And now, for another surprising announcement. I was just eating sushi in New York a little while ago. Of course, Jeff was with me, and he paid for it all. What? Sushi in New York? <laughs> Are you even more surprised now? And he treated me to the best sushi there was. By the way... Can Jeff sleep peacefully when he's with me? And his sleeping face is just like a child's. So cute. He would never show his sleeping face when he's sleeping with you. Jeff, you can't possibly be doing this. I thought he was a good husband and father because he's always kind to me and our daughter at home. I thought our family could get along well forever. 
shocked, aren't you? Hey, are you shocked? By the way, I used to be the leader to a group of beauties. They said I had top class looks and charisma. So compared to you, an ordinary woman, there is no comparison. That means I'm superior to you as a woman. Do you understand? Even if you boast about it without even having met each other in person. Let me tell you one thing from me, okay? What is it? What grudge do you have against me exactly? Grudge? Can you stop talking about such nonsense? I wouldn't even bother messaging an old woman like you if I didn't need to. So why are you trying to provoke me without any grudges or use? Why do you go so far as to steal someone else's husband and harass me when there's no reason for animosity or anything? I'm just doing what I believe is right, and I'll do whatever it takes to get what I want. That's my policy, or what you might call a way of life, even for old ladies. By the way, I heard from Jeff about your past. What did he say? He said you played softball in high school and had the skills to shine in tournaments, but that was all. You were just a serious girl with no sex appeal. That's what Jeff said. And he was lamenting about it, you know? I see. Compared to you, who only had sports as your selling point, I am the leader of a group of beauties. And with my looks and charisma, I am definitely the top student. In this case, it's obvious which one Jeff would choose, right? Yes, yes, I see. But still, Meander, the leader of the beauty group, huh? What do you mean with that tone of voice? Oh, I wonder if you're jealous of me. If that's the case, please stop. It's creepy. Old lady's jealousy is just ugly and creepy. Don't worry. It's not jealousy. There's just something that bothers me a little. That's all. Huh. Well, if that's the case, then that's fine. I'm not interested either way. Oh, I just realized. It's already this late. Jeff has a night shift job, so he left to go to work. I feel lonely. I wanted to spend some time together until morning. Well, it can't be helped if it's work. Even after he divorced that old woman, he still has to take care of me, whether it's financially or otherwise. When you mentioned work, it suddenly occurred to me. Is Jeff sneaking out of work to meet you? Bingo! Jeff is such a spoiled brat, he often skips work to come see me. This is also great proof that Jeff loves me, don't you think? I see. I thought he was working seriously. That's why he hasn't been promoted and is still just a section chief. Then let me ask you, how did you and Jeff meet? I was working as a lunch delivery person. I delivered lunchboxes to Jeff's company as well. When I met him there for the first time, I fell in love with him at first sight. So I secretly put a note in the lunchbox and gave him my contact information. And that's how you started dating Jeff. That's right. And on the night when I gave him my contact information, I received a message from Jeff saying, I also thought you were cute. I'm happy you gave me your contact information. So as you may have guessed, our relationship started from there. And as we started dating, Jeff said something like this to me. What did he say exactly? That your body is flabby and unresponsive. Meander's young and fresh body is pleasurable and healing, he said. Flabby and unresponsive? Well, it's true. You're getting old and your body's getting saggy like a fat person's. And it's only natural for Jeff to become obsessed with my body, which is young and stunning. And besides, he said something like this to you too, didn't he? I can no longer see her as a woman. She's just aged. I'm getting bored of her, he said. Oh, really? Well, that's refreshing to hear. I understand what you're trying to say and about Jeff's affair. We can talk about this later. 
I have to make a late night snack for my daughter, Checky. What? Wait a minute. I haven't heard the answer I want yet. What answer do you want to hear? About your divorce with Jeff. Jeff and I can't be at ease until we know when you're going to divorce him. You don't need to panic. I'll give you a clear answer. I'll talk to my husband and then contact you. There's no time to say such leisurely things. I want to be alone with Jeff as soon as possible. If you really want to talk to Jeff so much, I'll add him to the group chat right now. That way you can ask him what you want to know, and we can decide on the answer quickly. It's a two-for-one deal. Ugh, you're such a hassle. Fine then, if you say so, go ahead and do as you please. Yay! So, should I invite Jeff right away? Ten minutes later. What's up, Meander? I'm still at work. Wait, what is this? Why is Pamela's name in this group chat? Sorry for bothering you late at night while you're busy working. Working and cheating. What a tough job. Isn't that right, Jeff? What? Pamela? Is it really you? Wait a second. What the hell is going on? It's too sudden. I can't keep up with what's happening. Can you give me some time to organize the situation? Let's talk about it after that. Jeff, I've been waiting for you. Sorry for disturbing you while you're working. This old lady, I mean your current wife, has been persistently asking me to talk to you. Let's just decide on a divorce date now. As your wife wishes. Also, I want to start talking about our wedding soon. Don't you? Oh, the wedding. I didn't realize we were even talking about that. You two must be really close. No, Pamela. Can you please calm down first? Meander has just been talking without any input from me. Oh, by the way, would you like to come too, old lady? To mine and Jeff's wedding? That sounds nice. I'll be sure to attend. I'm quite interested to see what kind of wedding it will be with a younger, beautiful, charismatic leader like you, Jeff. Hey, wait a minute. Please calm down, Pamela. This woman is just pushing the conversation on her own. And I have no intention of divorcing you. Anyway, let's talk face to face when we get home. This is a big misunderstanding. It's a shame, but I can't believe you even more now that you're so flustered. I don't want to see your face anymore. So I'll have the lawyers handle the divorce discussion for now. I'll let you know when the date for the discussion is set. And if you have any complaints, I'll hear them during the discussion. So please wait a minute. I really don't want a divorce, okay? I really love you and Checky. Meander! Wait a minute, Jeff. You've been talking nonsense since earlier. You told me that you only loved me. Shut up. I'm talking to Pamela. Wait a minute. When did I say that? Do you have any proof? Do you? That kind of excuse won't work. I even recorded the video when you confessed your love to me and uploaded it to Instagram. What? what? Instagram? Yes, and it's perfect. I'll even show it to your wife. Let everyone on Instagram see how lovey-dovey Jeff and I are. Oh, you can show it to me too? It seems interesting. Yes, it's definitely interesting. Here's the URL for the proof. Open your eyes wide and take a good look. Oh, wow. This is... You seem really happy, Jeff. I'm glad you met such a beautiful girlfriend. No, that's not it, Pamela. This is some kind of mistake. It's not true. Meander, how could you do something so outrageous? Huh? What are you angry about, Jeff? After all, I'm younger and more beautiful than this old lady. Shut up. I only intended for you to be a fling. The one I truly love is Pamela. That's why I could never break up with her. But you can, though. Well, anyway, I'll send your things to Meander's house later. I'll grant your wish and break up with you, so you two can be happy together. What are you talking about, Pamela? Please calm down and listen to me. 
Anyway, no matter what you say, I'll never get a divorce. So if you want compensation or damages, I'll pay whatever you want. Just let our relationship with each other end, Meander. No way, Jeff. You're lying, right? There's no way Jeff would say that to me. There's no way I, a young and beautiful woman with charisma, would lose to an old hag like Pamela. Jeff, you need to wake up. You're being deceived. Dump that hag and come back to me. I'll forget what you said earlier if you do it now. You're persistent, Meander. You won't seduce me. Not only as a husband, but I have a responsibility as Checky's father. I can't let my daughter, whom I love as much as my wife, be sad, so divorce is absolutely impossible. That's wonderful. What a moving speech. But Jeff, I and Checky wanted to hear those words a lot earlier. Checky is watching this conversation with us right now. She's laughing at you, calling you a pathetic father. What? Even if you didn't realize it. By showing our own child such a tumultuous situation, you lack the awareness of being a father too much. You should have said those theatrical lines before hurting your child like this. And if you truly love your child, you shouldn't be involved with a young woman. That's true. But it was just a moment of weakness. Even if you weren't my wife, you should understand that men have those moments too. I don't want to understand that kind of thing. So, changing the subject, what about the lunchbox I made for you? I heard from Meander that you received it and ate it for lunch. What are you talking about? Of course I ate your lunch. If it was the lunchbox Meander brought, I gave it to my subordinate. That's strange. I'm talking about the lunchbox I made. Actually, I received a thank you from one of your subordinates for my lunchbox. When I asked what was going on, it seems like Jeff was always the one giving them to Meander. What? Are you serious? I'm sorry. I was really in the wrong all this time. I apologize. I wanted to hear those words of apology much earlier. And that's not all. I heard that you treated Meander to sushi in Genza, right? Checky and I haven't had sushi since I took her to a conveyor belt sushi place on her birthday. I really feel sorry about that, too. Then tomorrow, as an apology, how about the three of us go to Genza and eat as much sushi as we want? Huh? What are you talking about, Jeff? Why do you and I have to eat with your ex-wife, whom you're about to divorce? It's not about you. It's decided that it will be me, Pamela, and Checky, the three of us. <sighs> I'm just speechless. Falling for a stupid woman like her will cost you your wife and daughter. Besides, do you think I want to be with a man who falls for a stupid woman like her, instead of me or Checky? I don't think that. That's why I'm apologizing so sincerely. And for Checky's sake, wouldn't it be better if both of us parents were together? Checky just said something like this earlier. If I pass the university exam, I'm going far away, so I don't need a father like this anymore. I thought you were a good husband and father, but Checky is different. That child has grown up to be a smarter daughter than we thought. I've always had an idea about your true nature, pretending to be a good husband and father. In fact, I secretly disliked you as a dubious man. What? What? Are you lying? Is it just a rebellious phase? It's better to divorce Dad quickly. From now on, I'll support Mom. You don't even realize that you've disappointed her to the point where she would say something like that to me. Then let me send a message to Checky now. I'll ask her directly about her true feelings. I refuse. Checky doesn't want to talk to you. Not even through messages. You won't be able to come into the house if you come back today, so you should camp out somewhere. What? Oh, that's right. There was something I had to ask you. You lied to Meander and told her that I used to be in the softball club, didn't you? Huh, a lie? Well, well, I regret doing that too. But there's no way I can tell her now. You were the leader of a biker gang back then. What? What are you talking about? You were in a biker gang? 
Oh my, why are you so surprised? You must be feeling faint through this message, but isn't a group of pretty girls just like that? They're a gathering of female delinquents who are indulging in wild behavior, just like a biker gang. And despite claiming to be the top of that group, you have no manners or decorum. It's even worse to insult someone as an old lady or hag upon first meeting. It's ridiculous for an impolite delinquent like you to even mention charisma. Ugh! Your mother cried when she found out about your behavior. She said, What a shameful daughter I have. What? My mom? My own mother? Wait, why is my mom being brought up here? There's no way she knows about me and Jeff, or about the beautiful people group. Oh, I told her earlier. Actually, your mother and mine have been friends for a long time. Since way back when. You probably don't remember, though. I have memories of playing with you when you were young. No way. That's a lie. We've known each other since we were young? That's just absurd. That's not the only thing that will shock you. Your mother knew that you were in the beautiful people group. And she's known for a long time. What? So when I showed her that Instagram photo earlier, I also showed her this. And she was extremely surprised to see that this was her daughter. Come to think of it, sometime in the past, my mom said something like, I can't stand Pam. Was the Pam she was talking about you? Ah, uh, yes, she called me that as a nickname based on a play on words from my name, Pamela. And the members of the biker gang called me that, too. Um, I'm sorry. I had no idea that you, Pamela, were the same person as that Pam. If you apologize and say that you didn't know, and it's enough to make amends, then we won't need to involve the police. Anyway, get ready to establish clear boundaries between you and Jeff, so be prepared to wait. Hey, Pamela. I just arrived in front of the house. Please open the chain on the door and let's talk. I've been thinking the intercom has been noisy since earlier, but when did you... Please stop causing a disturbance in the neighborhood, or better yet, don't come back. This is my last request. Open the door and let me talk to you. Please, give me one last chance. I'll do anything for that. Anything? Then I'll consider it if you walk around naked until morning. What? Hey, don't say such unreasonable things. I did say I'd do anything, but that's just... Do you have the awareness of what it takes to have that kind of determination? Don't use words like last chance or begging for my life so lightly if you don't have that kind of determination. And before anything else, if you don't like that... Then never cheat on me again. Um, um, Pamela? My mom just arrived here. Oh, she came to pick you up already. Your mother is amazing. She works so fast, and it's really helpful. Wait, Pamela, please wait. I'm really sorry. I swear I won't harass you anymore, and I won't ever show up again. So please, mediate between me and Mama. No way. If you're going to hold a grudge, then hate yourself for doing something so stupid. Your mother is pretty scary when she gets angry, too. Well, after me, of course. Just be scolded and straighten out properly. Aww. Now, Jeff, what are you going to do about this? Will you do as I say and behave, or will you be taken care of by the police? Your choice is one of these two, so choose. Ugh. Understood. Okay, if you're really angry, I'm ready to take responsibility. I'm prepared to do anything for you. Oh, really? And then what? Of course, I'm prepared to continue walking around naked until morning. I committed a crime that required that level of resolve. So I'll do just that from now on. I see. That's good. Then do it right now. I'll place a camera near the window to capture the footage as evidence. If you rest or stop, even once before morning, I'll stop considering any other options. That's the plan. 
So do your best until morning. That's all. Next morning. Morning. I did it. I kept going around naked until morning as you told me to. Is the camera working properly? Good morning and well done. I checked and you did keep going around naked until the end. Your determination has been confirmed. Uh, I see. That's great. Pamela, can you let me in the house now? Please, I'll put my clothes on now, so you can unlock the door chain while I do that. And then we can have a face-to-face -face talk in the living room. Oh, why are you in such a hurry and making such a misunderstanding? Huh? Misunderstanding? What do you mean? What do I mean? Just what I said. Earlier, I woke up and talked to Checky, and we thought about things. In the end, we decided that we can't live together in this house. Besides, Checky doesn't want someone who does shameful things and appears in such a pathetic state to enter our house. What? What does that mean, Pamela? You broke your promise, you lying woman. What promise did I break? I said, if you couldn't spin around naked, then we would stop considering. But I never said I would reconsider divorce if you did spin around. Th this is terrible. This can't be true. Who's really terrible here? You cheated on me and betrayed Chucky. Who trusted you as her husband and father. And you're going to act like the victim after getting involved with that self-proclaimed charismatic gal idiot woman. If you really think that way, you should look up the definition of the word terrible in the dictionary. This is too much, Pamela. Hey, I did my best for you. You know that? Please just reconsider. I'm sorry, but I give it up. Jackie and I have made up our minds. Instead of that, you should hurry up and get dressed and disappear from here. If you keep looking like that, you'll be reported as a suspicious person. And you left your work at the company, didn't you? You'll also face consequences there. Hello? You're not reading my messages anymore? What's wrong? Oh, did you faint from the shock? Well, take your time to rest now while you can, because when you wake up, that's when the real hell begins. Thereafter. And so in the end, Jeff was found collapsed in front of our house in a pitiful state by our neighbors. The neighbors reported it, and he was said to have cried loudly in grief. With the help of a lawyer, we quickly hired. Jeff and I got divorced without meeting each other. In addition to being reported for his pitiful state, it was also found out that he had been cheating on me while skipping work. And this led to him being fired for disciplinary reasons by his furious boss. As a result, he was completely isolated, rejected by his family, who learned the truth and left in disgrace. On the other hand, Meander came to apologize to me with her mother on a later date. Meander, who came to apologize, had her hair cut short as punishment by her mother and was prohibited from wearing makeup as another punishment and appeared completely barefaced and ashamed with her head down. Moreover, despite her young age, her bare face made her look like an old lady and I couldn't help but laugh. Meander was so embarrassed and miserable that she started crying. Both Jeff and Meander seemed to have incurred a large amount of debt. Both of them couldn't borrow money from their families and had no savings to pay off their debts. They lost their home and any place to return to. Jeff and Meander continued to live a life of dodging debtors for a while, but at some point it seemed they both disappeared without a trace, not sure if they were caught by those debtors or not. I was a little worried, as was Checky, but we are already strangers to them and have no intention of finding out. If there is anything I can do for them as a former family acquaintance, it's just to wish them good luck and live on. After I kicked out Jeff and Meander, my daughter and I regained peace in our lives. My daughter also moved into a university dormitory safely, and now I am living alone and relaxed.